Today, we're focusing on Living Tribunal. One of my viewers wanted to know what type of deck I would come up with if I combined Phoenix Force with Living Tribunal. Living Tribunal is a six cost, nine power card that reads ongoing, split your total power evenly among all locations. What that means is you take your total power, add it together, divide it by three, and that is your total power in each individual lane. And then you need to make sure you have enough of that power to win two of those lanes. So for this deck, that is exactly what we're doing. I love Human Torch, but there's a lot of negative ways to interact with him, namely Shang-Chi and Killmonger. So to protect him, our main avenue is Beast. So if we Beast on turn five, we have this huge Human Torch, we probably will not have priority. And so we now have a free Human Torch we can play on the last turn. And if we've taken back a couple of our other one cost cards, they are also free. So what you can do in the last turn is get a super huge torch and play Living Tribunal together on the last turn. And you just have so much power, it's going to be very difficult to beat. Your backup plan is Arnim Zola, so you have a huge torch. Now you play Arnim Zola, you get a huge torch in two locations. And our other backup plan is the normal multiple man Phoenix Force line. I will look to show all of those different play lines in this video, so let's get to it. I think we hold firm. We have a decent starting hand, actually. This is a Thanos deck, a classic. Uh, let's see if we can get a destroy target. We cannot, so we still hold firm. Turn three, do we draw into anything? They get our Phoenix Force, so they know what our deck is about. We have... Oh, I was going to say we get their Thanos. We get their alive. And we have nothing. So do I just kind of do a bounce game plan? Uh, Nico into Falcon. Okay, Mobius is no problem for me. This game is not, not drawing well. So, uh, yeah. There's that. There is our multiple man into Carnage. They don't have extra energy, so they can't ally with me. So I'm going to snap. I'm going to play multiple man and Carnage into New York. People typically don't play into New York. So if I do, there's a lower chance that I'm going to be interacted with, which is the case. And then I don't want them to feel safe, right? So, boy, playing Human Torch is very tempting. But I will do Phoenix Force and Ghost Spider. There's a low chance they're going to fill up this lane. New York throws a lot of things into uh, chaos. Okay, I don't think we gained priority. So we won't be able to use Eliath. But this is going to be a guessing game for them. And I might just play down Eliath just because it's the most amount of points. Oh, multiple man. I could bail on middle with Arnim Zola now that I drew into him. So if I move Ghost Spider, so I will move a multiple man here, move a multiple man here, and then Zola middle. Like and subscribe. Nice. Okay, so this is definitely making the cut of being included because this game plan went as poorly as you could and still win this. Like I said in the middle of the game, I was drawing horribly, but the fact that I finally drew in <laughs> to a destroy card and multiple man, I was able to do that on four and I have Ghost Spider in hand. So on turn five, I can just kind of make up ground because now I get two multiple man, even though I've played Phoenix Force late. That's really what Ghost Spider allows you to do. If you don't have Ghost Spider, a weaker substitution is Iron Fist. So this is a good example of how this deck works when you're not drawing well. Okay, next up we have Gamar. Valley of the Hand, we have Carnage and Phoenix Force. So we need a destroy target. We are going up against an Arishem deck. We have our destroy target. 
So I'm going to, I'm going to be patient because deep space is really a crappy location. So I need we'll need to keep one lane free because I'm probably going to Zola, but we will see. So play Human Torch and Carnage. I'm going to snap. I have what I need in hand. I also have the Living Tribunal. So maybe I could play Living Tribunal instead of Arnim Zola. We will see. Miss Marvel, okay. There's Falcon. Created by Arishem, alrighty. I want to make sure the Phoenix Forest Human Torch is in a free lane, which is going to be right since Deep Space is not helpful. So if I play her here on turn four, I move her on turn five, and then I can move her back on turn six. So that is what we will do. So I will play her here. Negasonic Teenage Warhead. That's funny. and But she's going to res resurrect in Valley of the Hand. So, yeah, they tried to snipe me, but that's okay. Playing Typhoid Mary into deep space is absolutely fantastic. Uh, I think we still go with the Arnim Zola game plan. So, I'm going to play Typhoid Mary here, and then Nico here. That way, I get points on my Zola. And there's my Human Torch back. And now I will drag Human Torch here for 14. And then play the Zola. And let's see where they kind of stack their power. I think I can win Tiebreaker. So getting the two points on Zola is absolutely fantastic. Is this an Arishem card? And uh, they have played nothing but random cards. So when I click on cards, I look at the bottom, created by Arishem, created by Great Portal, and then Miss Marvel, of course, created by Arishem. They have played into middle, so we are definitely going into tiebreaker. And just like that, maybe, question mark? It is going to come down to tiebreaker, but I think we... Oh, no, no, it's not. Bad math. I forgot the... Human Torch doubled, and there we go. Easy peasy, lemon sweet. So this is the other game plan of this deck. You Human Torch into Arnim Zola. They did call where we were going to play our Human Torch, but with Valley of the Hand here, that was never an issue. Also, okay, Mockingbird was a real card in their deck, and so was Colson. Against Arishem, you don't want to beat yourself up if they beat you with random cards. For every game that beats you with random cards, they have to retreat because they got random cards that were just trash. So you just have to keep that in perspective when going up against Arishem decks. That randomness will beat you, but also they lose plenty because of the randomness. And we were able to pull it out in a nice, clean winning line. Okay, next up we have Zest Professor. Thinker's Workshop, there's nothing we can do with that. We did draw into Phoenix Force, and we have our Destroy card, so now we just need a target. They, and we have our target, they are a normal deck. I will again be patient, I do not like throwing Human Torch out there just by himself to get interacted with. We have Bar Sinister, this is going to be a Bloodfest. I have Venom for that. And playing Phoenix Force into Bar Sinister is just fantastic. Hello, my dear. <laughs> well, not anymore. Let's see what Mirror Dimension does for me. They do have Sean. But I snapped, so this might be the loss I leave in here to show that it's okay to snap and then retreat. Okay, no bar sinister. So I will play Phoenix Force. Middle, they are going to Doc Ock me next turn. 
Am I afraid of a dark arc? Oh, this is risky. I'm riding this out. Oh, it's Doc Ock now. Okay. Oh, because it's Arishem. I forgot they could do that on turn three. Cut off one head, two more. Shall or turn four. Okay. They do have... Oh, because the... Ugh. I didn't even get my torch. Uh do I move this? Do I play that? I will I will keep it there for now. I'm already locked in here. So maybe they're dumb and play. Yeah. Oh, the green goblin got me. Is this was this in the deck? Yeah, it was in their deck. If I tribunal, that's never enough. Bad stay. Uh, I stayed on hope. <laughs> so learn from my mistake do not stay on hope i said i should snap and then retreat that's what i should have done and i paid the price so learn from this that is this is exactly how you don't play the game you you are free to snap and that was a good snap on my part I, every other game i will snap that same way if i have my winning line and the second the tables turn i should have left once they snap back and I did not listen to that advice, and I paid the price. Don't do this, <laughs> which is why I'm leaving this in. Okay, next up we have Edwin Gitorex. Comertage, we have our Destroy cards. We have Phoenix Force. We are going up against a regular Kitty, probably Thena deck. Uh, I think I play Nico now. Uh, I won't because I want to be careful about board space. Okay, I think I do Carnage. I will snap. Let's see if they have a goblin for me. But Ravona Kitty? Probably not. Okay, just a bunch of rocks. So that's kind of gonna stink. Because I am a combo deck. Phoenix Force. Middle. I'll do Phoenix Force middle. Okay, that didn't matter. The Juggernaut. This is a meta deck, but I'm not familiar with it. People have been adding Juggernaut into these types of decks. There's the Tribunal. So I think I... Human Torch. Ghost Spider back. And just get a bunch of points. Nico, I am trying to guard against uh, disruption. To be a little unexpected, I'm going to play Living Tribunal Middle. I am Iron Man. And put Torch right. So. <sighs> Because of Sean, like, I, I am just so paranoid over that. So they probably think I would move Human Torch middle. So that's why I'm moving him right. And then Living Tribunal middle. That can't be Sean, just in case. So let's see. It's unlikely they would Shadow King this location because of Thena. Such is my judgment. And then we spread out our power. Was that a good move? Okay. I am Iron Man. Uh oh. What did uh, did I win? <laughs> Victory. <laughs> Ooh. 
Yeah, that was nice. Uh, fantastic. During this recording, each of my games have been won differently. So here we have our first win with Tribunal. Boy, was it close. It uh, clearly would have been better if I had not Tribunal. <laughs> because we would have easily won, right? And then played any card middle. Now, again, this was, in my mind, the safer play because it plays around Sean. Again, I think it's unlikely if they have Sean in their deck that they were going to Sean right because I need to win middle. So they give up middle, which is why I truly believe they gave up middle. They were 100% expecting me to move human towards middle. I'm, I'm very convinced now that I'm talking through that. That is why they abandoned middle. They were not going to beat a 56 power torch not gonna happen so you give up middle because that's definitely where i'm gonna move it so i'm playing against expectations and i'm moving it to their strongest lane just in case they want a shadow king just in case they want a sean clearly they were expecting me to move human torch middle living tribunal isn't interactable aside from if they enchantress but if they enchantress then i still win because I'm definitely winning middle anyway, and then my big human torch is right. So this, the way I played around a lot of the different ways in theory they could beat me, which is why I made this specific play. Okay, next up we have Magic Donut Bear. Dream Dimension can be icky for our deck. They are an Erishem deck, so they're less affected by it. Space Throne. Okay. I have nothing to do. I wonder if I just play down the Nico. I will not. I will continue to be patient. I mean, Nico has her destroy spell active. Uh, this is awful. Do I play her middle? I can always pick that back up with Falcon. And then I also have Living Tribunal. And there's no clue what is in this Arishim deck. Okay, now this is going to be funny if I play Living Tribunal now. They have Super Scroll. Okay, yeah, we, we crapped out this game. This is how combo decks can go, and I just don't see a path forward. We don't have our destroy targets or our move targets, because we might be able to just build up a big human torch, but we can't even do that. We could eat a bunch with Venom, and then Zola... That's a possibility, but Dream Dimension gets in the way. I'm calling it. So with combo decks, you ha have to be careful. Risky. You, in all likelihood, are going to have an overall losing record. So I don't want to missell this deck. But the key is to maximize your cube gains and minimize your cube losses. Okay, next up we are against Doku Jitsu. Onslaught Citadel can't really help. I did draw into Human Torch. The other backup, backup, backup play line is just to get a big torch. So maybe I go down that path. So get down Human Torch. I forget. Iron Fist moves less left. Let's confirm that. Indeed, he does. We are going up against the regular deck. Forge makes me think. What does Forge make me think? Oh, one turn late on the Forge. Forge makes me think Brood or Destroy. If it's Brood, it will go middle. But this is where my brain is going to hurt. Because if I am going to just pump up this big torch, I potentially want to do Arnhem or Living Tribunal. So I need to make sure my lanes stay clear. So I will play Falcon here? No, because I can play Iron Fist and move Human Torch left. I don't want to pick up Falcon. So I will play Falcon here. Okay. Mr. Sinister. So this might be the hand buff deck with Gwynpool. They do have a Gwynpool avatar. Look at all of these cards. 
Iron Fist here because I want a beast. So Iron Fist. I don't even know. I, this is just a lot of points. <laughs> so, so Iron Fist here means my Human Torch goes middle. And then I pull it with Ghost Spider. But I could also wait, because what are my other cards in my deck? Maybe I wait. I think I wait. Yeah, so there's the Gwimple. It is the hand buff deck. Okay, we go one over. And then pull with Ghost Spider and pick up with Beast. This is going to be a ginormous amount of points. Yikes. Yeah, I forgot to highlight this play pattern on the intro, but this, if they can't, if they can't interact with me, this is a massacre, potentially. Come on, Torch, get back in my hand. I am hey. Iron Man. Iron Man. All systems go. <laughs> Yeah, massacre against me. Whoa, Nico can move too. Oh, but Nico's not free. Man, and I can't Zola. Okay, so we're going to do this. This is still a lot of points. So I play Iron Fist here. Human Torch moves two over. I pull... Let's pull Human Torch back here. And then I play Tribunal here. Okay, no mystique. Yeah, this is an absolute massacre. I definitely win left and right. Ugh, disgusting. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely disgusting. The and spread out all that power like peanut butter. Ugh. Ugh, filthy. Absolutely filthy. Victory. Yeah. Huh. So, this is a straight up move game plan with Living Tribunal. I think this is going to be the last game I show. Uh, I may or may not have bonus clips. Let's find out together. <laughs> uh, this is the other play line, so it is just a straight up move. You see Beast Impact. This is the first game we had where Beast just absolutely shined. Sure, Kamratage helped me out with Iron Fist. I'm able to move Human Torch an extra time, double that power again. But even without, they had 9 and 12 in lanes. I'm not quite sure why they played it out. Well, maybe they looked at my board, which had literally a 5-point Falcon and a two-point beast <laughs> going into the last turn on the board. So, but they didn't know I pulled in some free movers, but maybe they didn't think I could get enough power with that. But yeah, we just, we absolutely did. The other play line you can do when you pull back in Human Torch with Beast is if he's large enough, you can just play Human Torch and then Zola that to propagate it over to the other lanes. But this was almost always a Living Tribunal play and I figured it would be enough points for the people that are better with math. You could have legitimately calculated, oh, the Human Torch is going to be oh, 128. <laughs> so, so, yeah, you could do that math. No Phoenix Force involved here. Just Human Torch, moving him around a bunch. Get him off the board going into turn six. That way, he cannot be interacted with. You can't Red Guardian him. You can't Shaun him. You can't Shadow Kingdom, and then you just play him down with a bunch of your moving cards. Living Tribunal, GG's. You got to see how the cards really can interact in different ways in this deck. The other call out I will make is for Professor X. Professor X is a fantastic way to protect your Human Torch, your Phoenix Forced Human Torch, because you can move that under Professor X and nobody can interact with that. They can only move cards there. They can't play onto that location. So you know your Human Torch is safe. 
There are a lot less Killmongers in general running around right now, but you will run into the Surfer decks and the Destroyed decks still. So having a way to protect your Human Torch is super important, which is why we have Beast in this deck. I hope you give this deck a try and let me know how it performs for you. And now it's time for a bonus clip. So this right here is an old clip that I was doing during testing back when Hella had just been nerfed. So this is a somewhat older clip at this point. But I want to show you how Professor X functions in this deck. Uh, you can see armor in this version I was using as well. So I have Professor X locked down in the middle. That And it's a losing location. So players can get overconfident and think, okay, I'm definitely going to move my Human Torch middle. I don't have Living Tribunal in this deck. They're not thinking that. So middle is a win and they just have to win another lane. Whereas I'm actually going to slide the Human Torch underneath Professor X. So that's what you're seeing now, me sliding Human Torch under there. They've snapped me back, super confident. I am with the Elysium location. I'm also able to, with Iron Fist, slide Living Tribunal under Professor X. So if they have an Enchantress or a Rogue or anything, now that's protected as well. So yes, this game was assisted by Elysium, but I wanted to show you exactly how Professor X can work in this deck. And you should feel free to, to give it a shot. I ultimately decided that it wasn't the best thing for this deck. I preferred Beast, where I could just pull the cards back. And now I have this additional these additional lines that I can do. Professor X at five cost is costly, so that's ultimately why I decided on Beast as the linchpin if I need to protect Human Torch. Why are you still here?